recording. Um, I'm Greg Anderson, and I have with me uh, Dana Abbott and Chuck Warner. And today we want to talk about uh, their book, Eddie Reese. Right? Is that show up backwards? Shows up good. Okay, coaching, swimming, teaching life. Now, Chuck, uh, between Chuck, Dana, and I, I think we have over a hundred years of coaching experience. Chuck uh, is seven-time uh, YMCA national champion, Division II, former Rutgers coach, uh, author of four champions, one gold medal, and currently elite swim camps. And Dana Abbott is uh, currently the outreach NISCA chair, two terms as president of NISCA, and three times high school coach of the year in Texas, and co-authored this book. And I've read it, and uh, both of you were assistant coaches for Eddie Reese in Texas, and I'd like to know you something about that experience. Go ahead, Dana. So Chuck, Chuck first. Okay. Um, well, Greg, when you swam for Sherm Shabor, you got a look into what it was like to be in a world-class environment every day, and I think for a lot of us as young coaches, we can read about it. We can hear about it. We can go to swim meets and we can see coaches when they're with their athletes, but we were living it every day. And you see the humanity of people. <laughs> Dana doesn't like that word. You see the, uh, the, you know, the humanness of someone that is just, they've got their positives, they've got their negatives, they've got their uh, moments. And it's just a real um, eye opener. And it wasn't just Eddie, but we also had Paul Bergen coaching the women's team at the other end. So world champion Joan Pennington and world champion Nick Nevid. It's just a whole environment of people that we were with every day that were all about being the best in the world. Yeah, I, I think one of the, the neat things about going to Texas was that we've got some different backgrounds. I had mostly uh, age group club experience. And uh, I, I felt I had gone about as far as I could uh, in the uh, state of Mississippi. And uh, so I, I got a job up in Decatur, Alabama. We took a trip to Nashville and I met one of Paul Bergen's assistants at Nashville Aquatic Club, Chris Gibbons, the late Chris Gibbons. And uh, I was really impressed with what Bergen was doing and achieving uh, in long course swimming when he didn't have a long course pool. And I thought this was probably a guy that I, I needed to try to get in to work with. And it wound up that uh, uh, through a strange set of circumstances, I wound up being asked to work with Eddie uh, like Chuck did. And um, the environment, as Chuck said, was just enormous. You, you walk in, you've got world-class athletes and American record holders and world student university games champions and, and so on. And um, it, it was quite, quite invigorating experience. When, the, when, Greg, when, when, uh, when you walk away from it summarizing, because people have asked me this a lot, I think they might be surprised at the priorities of things that I learned were, I'd say the top three were strength, and the importance of it. Secondly, technique and skills, the importance of technique. But thirdly was humor. I mean, firstly, excuse me, firstly was humor. Yeah. It was the most important thing that I thought we learned, developing a joyous environment to coach in. And that's something that we hope came through in the book, but um, just a really important part. I've told people that for the first few years after I left Texas, I was a really funny person because I was channeling Eddie <laughs> Reese all the time. And then uh -huh. I became plain old Chuck Warner. But um, Dana and I were back there a few times the last few years. And I remember Dana walking off the pool deck after one of those sessions and saying, you know what, I'm going to channel Eddie Reese for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, There's certain characteristics like that of just having fun. Right. The, the book is more than just a biography. Um, what, what other lessons besides humor and, and strength and technique do you think is, is in this book? It's, it's more than just a biography. And I, I, you said uh, coaching, swimming, but teaching life. You want to comment on that? 
Dana, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. one, of, one of the reviewers of the book um, made the comment that uh, one of the things you can learn uh, being around Eddie was not just how to be a good coach, um, but how to be a good father, how to be a good spouse, and um, how to treat other people. And that's, you know, that's here and, and the swimming stuff is over here, but this allows you to do the swimming stuff. And um, Eddie is a heck of a father, a grandfather. Um, and he is, he and his wife, Eleanor, have one of the most blessed marriages I think we've ever experienced. And it's all because of how you treat people. And they are both incredible human beings. I, and, I had, and that comes out in the book too. I, I had swam for a coach to, who really got me motivated to want to be like him and be a swim coach that also loved to loved his alcohol. And he was a very charismatic guy, but was out at night and had a real alcohol problem. And it's what I knew about what a dynamic swim coach was. And then when I went to Texas, I found out there was a whole different role model. And so for me, as well as I think all of his swimmers, it became a new image to look up to. And just as Dana described, a great father, a great husband, but also Eddie's never had a drink in his life. And he, he, you know, finds a way to find joy in whatever he's doing, whether it's going to play racquetball or going fishing or what have you. And Dana said this to me when he helped me with a book before this one, that it's as though he kind of raised the bar for us all to strive to be a little better. Whether it was telling me I couldn't be on the pool deck for conference championships if I didn't lose weight, or, <laughs> which I did, or just the way he lived his life. And, um, and I think all of his swimmers aspired to that as well as his coaching staff. The, the book, um... I mean, he's a college coach, an Olympic coach. Um, I, I, I forget, seven-time NCAA champion team 14. coach. Fourteen. Uh, am I? I'm wrong. Fourteen. Fourteen. Good lord. Um, <laughs> what What can a high school coach get out of this book? I feel like almost everything. It's. it's so <laughs> I, do, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, the one thing that I thought of actually that isn't so similar is. Eddie gets a very self-motivated group of guys. They really want to come to Texas to be the very best in the world, the best they can be. And that's not what it's like for every high school coach. Um, as a matter of fact, that's probably not what it's like for any high school coach. So there is a difference there in that he's got some people that are really excited about seeing how good they can be. They have a tremendous competitive environment where people are chasing each other at practice but um it is a little different in, in that respect but i think beyond that it's the same tools that goes into being a, a really great coach yeah I, I think one of the things i i coached high school for a long time 37 seasons uh here in texas and one of the things that, that uh, chuck just mentioned is that the the, the makeup of the teams in high school and college are really different. Um, high school kids, we, we get a lot of kids that have never been on a team before. And at Texas, you've got guys that are coming in that are fighting for a spot on the NCAA travel squad. And there are some NCAA qualifiers every year that have to get left home. Um, and, and that makes practices extremely competitive. Uh, a lot of high school teams, the, one of the jobs is just motivating them to train uh, to achieve the performance you want to see them get. Uh, so it is a little bit different there. But if you take those two things aside, um, the, the, the qualities that the coach has to um, uh, model and uh, exemplify every day are extremely helpful at, at any level. There's a really interesting story you might remember <clears throat> in the book, Greg, of um, Sean Jordan, who had swam in high school at Highland Park and was not even thinking he would swim in college. And he came and looked at Texas because he wanted to join a fraternity. And Eddie, Eddie nudged him into swimming and he redshirted the first year. 
And, and actually a story that isn't in the book that uh, I think we have time that I could share. Sure. Is that, uh, Sean, Sean worked his way up to the point that um, he got to be on the travel squad his, his sophomore year, which might have been his third year at Texas. And he was very excited to go out to California to swim in the San Francisco area, your, your home base, and um, swim against Cal Berkeley and see the sunshine and see the ocean, see the waves, see the palm trees. And they got out there and in typical San Francisco Bay Area in the fall, it's <laughs> cold, you know, 35 degrees. And he, said, he said every guy on the team had every stitch of clothes on they could possibly wear, layered after layered after layered. And Cal Berkeley just was destroying them in the dual meet. And race after race, Cal was winning, Texas was freezing. And they got to the final relay and Sean was gonna swim on the final relay. And uh, Eddie came over to them and said, um, guys, I think we can win this one. And Sean was fired up for his first big travel meet. Maybe they'd finally win a race. They go off and the first guy has got a little bit of a lead for Texas. The second, the same. Sean dives in on the third leg. Now he, he's doing this the way, you know, California guys would learn to do it. That the first guy goes and you take off your parka. The second guy goes and you're taking off your sweatshirt. You're getting ready. You drop your pants, you get up on the, on the block. And he goes third leg and he forgot to tie a suit. Oh. So he dives in, his suit goes down to his knees, and he's saying to myself, himself, am I going to swim for Texas on this, or am I going to stop at this turn and take, pull my suit up? And he said, I'm just going to swim for Texas. So he swam <laughs> clear out of his suit. I don't know how they did on the relay, but Sean said he got out of the pool, and um, his teammates all jumped around him, and they said, Boy, that announcer was having fun. He kept screaming, look at that guy in the white suit go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, there, there was guys like Sean that were very marginal on their motivation in high school. But he became a two-time Olympian, an Olympic gold medalist. And I think one of the things on this subject that is great to learn from about Eddie is he loves swimming so much that it's contagious. Mm -hmm. really, he loves to talk about it. Um, there's a little story in there. Richard Quick wanted to go fishing with Eddie just to learn about swimming. And Richard made the comment, I got so sick of hearing about his guys. This guy was going to do this and that guy was going to do that. And to this day, you call Eddie on the phone and if you get him into a conversation about his team, it's going to be a long conversation. conversation. He's got a lot to say about all his guys. He gets so excited about people going fast. So I think even though uh, Dana's absolutely right, we get so many marginal kids on high school teams, when you're around a coach that loves swimming that much and loves helping people get faster, it really is contagious. And it pulls a lot of the kids along that are marginal in their motivation. You, you mentioned humor. And throughout the book, you have... I don't know how many, but uh, a lot of Eddie Reese quotes. And I could see myself, if you know, I'm retired now, but um, putting some of those quotes on my bulletin board. What, what are your favorite quotes from, from the, the research in the book? Dana, go ahead. I, I, I got one that, uh, and this, is, this is not from research, this is just from when we were there those first two years, uh, not realizing, of course, that we were, uh, taking part in building the ground floor of, of one of the greatest athletic dynasties uh, in history. But um, we, we used to go to the weight room over at the stadium on Sundays and we'd work out and, and the guys would work out really, really hard. And then we'd go to the pool and do a loosen down swim. And at a, at a, um, uh, I think it was an ASCA conference one year, World Clinic uh, someone asked Eddie, I was sitting in the audience and, and someone asked me, he says, how do you, how do you motivate him in the weight room? Cause I think a lot of us know it, it's, there's a lot of yelling that goes on in the weight room. If you've been around, you know, your football squads and so on, there's a lot of noise and you, you try to motivate the guys to, you know, move more iron and more weight. And so the, the, the question from the audience was, you know, how do you motivate them in the weight room? And Eddie just said, I unlocked the door. 
and, and that was pretty much it. Uh, I, I thought it was really funny. Um, but it's mm -hmm. those guys that was pretty close to the truth. Yep. I think we've got 115 quotes, something like that, Dana, in there, and another 50 stories from swimmers. And we really wanted the book to be as much from Eddie's voice as possible. And hopefully with all that quotes that comes through, that it's uh, almost like he's talking to you or you're getting to walk through his coaching life with him and the way he sees it. There's, there's a couple of them that, that I like um, or th that especially come to my mind right now. One that's kind of his classic quote about his program and his team, which is take care of yourself, take care of each other and the rest will take care of itself. And the other is be patient or become one. And <laughs> both of those to you. <laughs> both of those are so appropriate to what we're going through with this pandemic. Absolutely. You know, they, they, and that's, I think, part of the magic of Eddie Rees, the simplicity with which he can boil things down. Some people say that genius is simplicity, being able to put things in a few words that's concise, but sends a very powerful message. And um, boy, patient, be patient or become one for people out of work and people waiting for their programs to get started again. It's, that's a pretty good one. And, and hopefully for people that are not up and running or even are, this is a great book to kind of re regenerate your thinking about swimming and coaching. And we love the feedback we've gotten and um, hope people enjoy the read. I think one of the things that, that really made us feel good was, uh, and I believe this was in the review by um, Governor Perry, was that, um, or maybe it was uh, Martha Analito, Chuck, tell me which one it is, but said this, this book should be read not just by every swim coach, but by everyone who has to, wants to be a leader, a manager, um, a motivator, uh, a spouse. Um, it's got life lessons which is where the title came from. You know, you learn about life, not just about swimming, although there's a good deal of swimming in there that, about technique and so on, but um, just just how to be really good with people. And Eddie is, is one of the best. I want to thank both of you. I think we've reached our, our time. I don't know when this is going to be uh, put on the website. And I, I, I'm hoping that I can uh, I can get this out to the NISCA coaches. Um, it, I, we don't have the store up since uh, the new website was, was published, but um, it's going to be put up really soon. And when it does, I'll, we'll publish this uh, interview. Thank you so and, much. Yeah, and we'll make a note, too, that uh, Chuck has signed every one of those books. That's right. Uh, anything else you want to add? Thanks, well, for, thanks having so us. for having us on, Greg. Okay, thank you. I'm going to stop recording now.